How's it going? This is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey GUI short tutorial number two. In this one we're going to be looking at how to use the radio button and first up is we'll discuss what a radio button is. So a radio button in essence is just like a checkbox where you can have a state of it being checked or unchecked but unlike with the checkbox the radio button works in groups so you'll create a group of radio buttons meaning two or more radio buttons and if any of them is selected none of the others in that group can be selected so let's just create a couple of radio buttons Now I'm going to start off without adding any variables or labels just so that way we can get uh, them on the screen. And the text that I'm going to be writing will come into play in a little while. Okay, I'm a slow typer so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy this if my mouse will cooperate. Okay. Alright, come on, copy that. Alright, control C. Alright, I'm a slow typer so to save time I am going to just copy and paste uh, I want four and I'll just edit them a little bit now this is a mini tutorial I've already covered this subject in in a full-length tutorial in the main GUI tutorial series so if you want to know more than we're covering in this go and watch the the main tutorial because we're just scratching the surface of what you can do with the radio button but this will be enough to get you going with it and show you how to use it and what it does. Um, let me type in some new colors. And the colors here will come into play when we actually demonstrate how to actually use the radio button. And we'll do red. All right. Okay, so we've created our radio buttons. And as you can see, if I have one of them selected, none of the other ones can be selected. Okay, so you're presenting options to your user and they can only select one of those options. Okay, the next thing is how to create groups. So like I said, radio buttons work in groups and there's two ways that we can create different groups. So let's say if I have this and right below it or somewhere else on my GUI, I want to create another group of radio buttons that have different options or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these two groups. Actually, let me make this a little bit lower. Okay. So here we have our GUI and we have two sets of radio groups, but they're not actually two sets. So if I select this one here and then I go and select this one here, this one should be unselected. So as you can see, even though they're separated, they're still part of the same group. So what we need to do is for the first radio in each group in the options what we're going to do is type in the word group and now if we run it again we have two separated groups so I can have this group and then this group okay so that's how we make a group now what we're going to do is we are going to create variables for our group. We're going to get rid of this one because we don't need it anymore. And just like with our checkbox, we're going to want to make a, a name that makes sense to do with what it's doing. But we're going to keep it uh, super simple and use generic variables. So we have rad1, rad2, rad3, and rad4. Okay, next what we're going to do is we want to have a label that is attached to this group. So there's a way we can do it as a group, but we're not going to be looking at it in this tutorial, so we're going to attach it to each one. So we're going to use the same label for all of these, and when they, somebody presses on it, it's going to execute that label. So we just type in G, and we're going to call our label radio label, because why not? And then because I'm a slow typer, I'm just going to copy that and paste it in. Okay, so we have a label attached to all of them. Now we need to go down here and create that label. And I'll add in my return right away. Now, 
some of you might have noticed that almost always when I create a label I before I do anything else I put in the return and that's because if you're building up a large GUI and you want to actually create the GUI before you actually have it set to do different things by doing it this way I don't have to worry about any problems by not having that return so I have the label there I have the return there now I can go back to work on my GUI and build in the next controls and then add in any more labels that I need and then once I'm done with my GUI then finally I can come in here and fill in whatever I need it to do so that's why I always add in that return even if I don't need it right now okay so let's see we have our group of radios they all have a variable associated with them but they don't actually have a value so even though and what I'm actually gonna do before I talk about that is I'm actually gonna set this first radio in the group to be default checked so when we run it it'll start off in the check state so even though it's technically checked this variable doesn't know that it has no idea of any values that it should have so it should have a one for checked or a zero for not checked but it doesn't know that it, this variable has no value yet what we need to do is we need to submit the values into those variables so the first thing we're gonna do is as soon as we load up the GUI before it exits our auto execute area or in other words before it hits this first return we're gonna put in GUI submit so right as soon as the GUI loads up any values that we should expect to have so this one will we should expect a one because it's checked and then the rest of them should have a zero because they're not checked we're gonna make sure that they have those values to rate right off to begin with okay next thing we're gonna do is each time you click or interact with the GUI we're gonna want it to go into the label and immediately in the label we also want our GUI submit no hide because this only counts for as soon as it loads up the GUI as soon as it hits this return this GUI submit isn't going to be doing anything else so in our label we're gonna put put that in there so as soon as it executes it it's going to update the value of those variables so now we can use those variables to test to see if they're true or false or if they have a one value or a zero value but what are we going to use them for let me set it up first so we're going to say if if rad one equals one we're going to do this else if else if radio button two equals one we're gonna do something else else if radio 3 is equal to 1 we'll do something else and then last and but not least if and you know what I'll throw in a little curve I'll show you that you don't need to do the parentheses in this one. We'll do if rad four equals true. Okay. So all of this means the exact same thing, but you can see that you can type it out in different ways. Okay. So there we go. We have our conditionals, but now we need to actually fill them in with something. So what we're going to have our GUI do is we're going to have it change colors depending on what checkbox or what radio button we select. So the first thing we're going to do is even though we don't need it because we've set the D, we've set white to be the starter state. So it's the default of the GUI is white, so we don't actually need to do, put this here, but why not? So we'll set the GUI's color to white, which is its default. So like I said, we didn't actually need to do that, but whatever. So we run the, the script. They click on one of these radio buttons, goes into the label, and the value is 1. So if the value is 1, we're going to want to change the GUI's color to white. If the value is 2 if the second radio button is the one that's selected we're gonna change the color to blue
If the third radio button is the one that's selected, we're going to change the GUI's color to green. And last but not least, if the fourth radio button is selected, we'll change it to red. Okay, let's go ahead and run our program. So we start off with our white state. If I select blue, the GUI should change to blue. If I select green, it should change to green and red. Um, hmm. Maybe I can't do it that way. My uh, foundation is in C, so I'm used to always using parentheses. So I can be thrown a curve sometimes when I try it without it. All right, blue, green, and red. There we go. Okay, so that's it for this one. Be sure to hit that like button to keep these tutorials coming, and I will see you on the next one, which will cover something. I don't know what yet. We will see. All right, have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one.